here's our bear, uh, the abdominal cavity more completely opened. So the stomach again, the intestines, which we really don't need to open up. This structure hanging between or over the pelvis is the bladder. I've looked at one of the kidneys, so next to the heart is one of the bear's kidneys. And I talked on the GoPro about, on the other video, about how for ungulates, deer and moose and things, we might look at uh, the amount of fat on the kidney as an index to the animal's overall body condition. That animals in nutritional stress will begin to use subcutaneous fat first, and then they will begin to metabolize the fat around their internal organs. This bear, even though it's only nine months old, had a lot of fat around its kidney. For bears, we don't really look at a kidney fat index very much, uh, but for ungulates, we do. Uh, you know, bears have a whole different winter metabolism um, when they're hibernating than the animals that remain winter active. But what I really wanted to show uh, today and why I like to get female animals is to show the reproductive tract itself of the bear. And so what we've got on either side are the, is the uterus and the ovary. So here's where my finger is, is one of the bear's ovaries. Here's the horn of the uterus. And the uterus itself is right there between my fingers. And then if we go up from there, I'm going to change hands with the camera. If we go up from there, we follow the other uterine horn, and we find the other ovary right here. And so even on an adult bear, these organs are not much larger. Uh, the ovaries are very small. The uterus, when not in use, <laughs> with um, with a placenta, with with developing fetuses, which they only begin to develop in um, around this time of December, maybe late November, and then are born in January. Um, when not in use, uh, the uh, the uterus is also very small and very thin. Right, so you can get a sense of, you can see my finger basically through the uterus. But in an active adult bear who's pregnant and about to give birth, there could be anywhere from one to five or six uh, fetuses filling up the horns of the uterus and the uterus itself with their, each of them having a placenta attached to the uterine wall somewhere. And so in some animals, we will examine reproductive tracts and look at and stain them, uh, or sometimes we can even see it with the naked eye. We'll look at the scars left on the placenta or left on the uterus by the, those placentas when they detach uh, after birth. They leave a visible scar um, on the uterus for quite some time that we can, particularly in some of the harvested fur bearers, we can use that to uh, reconstruct reproductive histories for that animal for that year. We could also take the ovary, this little structure here, this is the ovary right there. I'm try and zoom in. It's not focusing unfortunately. This little brown mass above my thumb is the ovary. That's where all of this bear's uh, egg follicles are stored and will be released every time she comes into heat throughout her lifespan. So there's uh, eggs in this ovary and there's eggs in the other ovary which is here. Again the small brown structure And every time when this bear becomes reproductively active, every time that she goes into heat, ovary eggs will be shed from each of those ovaries. And then if she actually becomes pregnant, 
uh, where the ov where the egg was shed in the ovary, a structure called the corpora lutea will develop. And for some species, we can if we can obtain the ovaries from harvested or dead animals, we can look at the number of corpora lutea and use that as an index uh, to pregnancy. We can estimate, we can figure out exactly how many eggs uh, were fertilized from a female in a given year by looking at those corpora lutea counts. And so I'll have some slides that demonstrate that as well. But very small. Um, right, this is my index finger next to the ovary and it is not even as big as the as I don't have my glove, but this is my little finger, and the ovary itself is smaller than the tip of my little finger. And even on an adult bear, it won't be very much larger than that, and the reproductive tract will be about the same size. So it's common for asking hunters uh, to save reproductive tracts, whether it's of bears or of moose or of deer. Um, quite often, uh, if they've not received any training or looked at any uh, literature on how to do it, they often bring in kidneys, thinking those are the ovaries, right? And so the kidney is a much bigger structure. I'll look for the other one under here. Let's zoom out. <laughs> but here's the other kidney on this side, all covered in fat, right? That's a fairly big structure. That's what sometimes confuses people with uh, an ovary. But the, like I said, the ovary are these little tiny um, brown structures, you know, no bigger than the nail on your little finger.